And so when I put that music on, what I was going to make you do was dance around before we started. But, but I thought I'd go, I'd go easy on you. Um, how did I end up uh, using technology? Well, there, there was an advert about the appliance of science. Um, and, and I think it was um, Colby or, or, or one, of the, one of the fridge makers. And they say, we've got the best fridge that, that's driven by the best science. And, and as a coach and an educator, what I want to do is make sure my teaching and coaching is, is at the cutting edge. And I'll use that well-known phrase at the moment, preparation for the 21st century teacher. And I think as physical educationists, we've been doing that for some time. Um, so what, what actually happened was I'd, I'd been teaching quite a long time. And if you actually look at, at the sort of what I now call the tools of the trade, there's the, the, the camera, um, there's the printer, there's the video cameras, um, there's um, the, the uh, DVDs, which I use quite a lot of. There's the, the, the instant burner of your DVDs, because the one thing I found is, unless we give uh, feedback more or less instantly, and we, we, we don't try and do anything ourselves, we empower our students to take on board the technology, then the power of the technology may well be lost. So um, I've used one of these for a long, long time, mostly started in 1973. Wasn't as good as this one. Uh, because when I was watching games and I wanted to assess students, I was using a tick-off sheet. And the tick-off sheet m meant that while I was ticking off, I was missing play. A and also I found it was a good emotional tool for me when I was cursing the referee for making the wrong decisions. But what it did, it gave me a permanent record of what I thought I saw. Uh, and then videos became, uh, be became more um, readily available and I, I moved to the video. Um, source of amusement, what I, what I do, I use this as a coaching tool and your name is? Miriam. Miriam. If I see Miriam doing something really well on my commentary, I go, fantastic Miriam, very well done. And I keep playing that back and I keep playing the video back. So that is reinforcement of Mir Mir Miriam's uh, good play. However, if we take somebody else who makes a mistake, and it's a fairly embarrassing mistake, what I can do is show that mistake as well. And the instantness of this is that I've used it on the coach to and from again. Right? So uh, a little bit about myself is that um, I teach physical education. I am a teacher first, but I've been involved in, in, uh, in coaching rugby at a reasonable standard where I've, I've done the national team here for five years. And in 2003, I did the analysis using the programme we're going to show you with Fiji at the World Cup 203. Uh, so again, uh, what I'm saying, if I can use the technology, I think anyone can use it. I think one of the reasons why I was invited to talk today was somebody kept coming into my office and said, you've got so many gadgets, all right? And, and I can't say I know how to use them all, um, but, but I do try. And I, I think we're foolish and with some success, I think. Um, so here I, I store everything on, 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 my, uh, on my disc here, okay? Um, trial and error. If you don't use it, you lose it. A and uh, we have to use the technology on, on a regular basis. So there's the talk. No one said it would be easy. Um, I'm not saying it is e easy. One of the things I did, I, I, I do get in fairly early. And if you look at that, that, that last um, handout I've given you, I've given you the, the, uh, the slides, but that, that was some musings this morning. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is you leave here understanding the rationale about why we use ICT in games um, particularly. See, physical education too often is marginalised as a subject. It's not seen as a real subject. Math, science and physics is. So I talk about physical literacy and I talk about numeracy. So I actually will promote those outcomes in our, in, in, in our games play. So we don't just kick a ball around the park. Right? And, and, and my previous study was, how can we, how can we promote trust, loyalty, honesty, um, affiliation, um, cooperation, through, through playing games. Uh, and, and, and I do a three-day course on looking at team unity, cohesion, um, um, and, and self-esteem, um, um, awareness, uh, honesty, whereby we play a lot of games. What, what, what I want to do with you is mostly pack in a three-day course into what, what is left 55 minutes. Um, so what are the expectations and what are the opportunities that um, ICT has... has um, has given me. Well, one of the things I know is that kids kind of say, hey, listen, I'll watch match of the day. And they'll watch Warsaw beating Liverpool. Or whatever sport you're involved in, there's good coverage on TV of sport. And it creates a permanent record of, of, of what's actually happened. One of the problems with the performing arts, and I, I, I say art, drama, and phys ed, is um, 
We don't capture permanent records of our performance. I've got a T-shirt at home. It says, the older I get, the better I was. I played for England. Well, I didn't actually. I played in England. But it's amazing how many people come to Singapore and tell me that they've done so-and-so. And And all I say now is, show me your portfolio. Pardon? Show me your portfolio of of your play. So if you claimed you've played for London Irish or Fiji or whoever, show me, because I need evidence. And so when I select a player or recruit somebody, and indeed, I'm sure now that when we go and give presentations, before we go and give our presentation, we have to send a video of, 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 of us presenting. Because we might be very knowledgeable, but if we're not engaging um, and, and we're not articulate in, in, in presenting our, our matter, then, then um, uh, sometimes we won't get accepted. Um, so. Portfolio, um, one, one of the things I, I want to say to you that, yes, I've used technology, but it's actually impacted on, on the pedagogy that we're using. So um, I'm trying to take assessment, and I've used um, uh, technology to assess kids' pl- play, but it's given us future direction for, for, for where we're going to go. So it's used for motivation. Kids love seeing themselves on, on the TV. Right? And that's the first level of, of the employment of technology. But if we're going to create understanding and thinking... Right, an intelligent performance, we need to get them to analyse, uh, analyse their performance. Um, Technology is a wonderful thing, great when it works, not very good when it doesn't. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask each team, okay, to take their car, all right, take their car, and just see if you can drive the car, turn on, turn on your, your, your thing. <laughs> you haven't got a licence, well, I give you a licence. Now, what we've got to do is make sure we've got the right numbers with the right cars. So that's number four, there's number four. There's number, what number are you guys? Number one, number one. Okay, now, th- th- this is really quite important. Turn it on, turn your car on, and have a go at dr- driving your car. Where's the fourth car gone? Fourth car? One car, two car, three car? Oh, you're there. Do you want to join, join a group? Okay. Very dangerous, put it, put it on the floor. Put it on the floor and have a go. Now, something's happening here. Something's happening. What's happening? Have you got a car? Try and drive your car. Off you go. You all got a car? Don't drive it too far away. Uh, Right, so what's actually happening? Yeah, okay. So, look, very quickly, what I'm saying to you, with the best intention of giving you all a car... Got to turn it on. Okay. So, there we go. So, it does work, yeah? Good. All your cars work. Now, whoa. Now. Okay, so stop. What did you just say? I didn't do anything. So, stop. Turn, turn, turn the cars off, please. Turn the cars off. Because what's happened, I learned this at my, at my, my own peril. What happened? So, you've got to be really careful. You, give, you, you empower people. T- turn them off. Turn the cars off. What happens is, these are common controls. And so, although I'm asking you to, to, to use the car, the fact of the matter is the technology of these little cars, because they cost $20, not $100, is that one control controls all the cars in the room. So what we have to learn to do is to go outside, put distance between us, okay, put distance between us, and um, we set different tasks. And the task for you guys will be, I want you to do a parking drill, reverse parking. And we're similar. Parallel parking. Or Parallel parking, reverse parking. Okay, now the problem with this is you might be able to do this, but I then say, go into a tank, take a you know, million dollar tank and go and practice, and you t- put it over the edge of a canal. Simulation's fine, but it's not real life. So one of the problems with technology, and, and one of the problems I have with people is, have you seen the game Wii, the Wii suite? Is it Wii? Okay, and I've actually seen a primary school using that for their PE. And I'm going, no, 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 please don't do that. Because we mustn't take the physical out of education. And we must use technology to um, uh, promote and engage our students actively. So one of the things, the big problem, big problem with having um, um, uh, mechanicals and technical things is we must make sure it works properly. Okay. You've all got, you've all got some, some juggling things. All right. have, a, have a go at juggling, please. Have a go at juggling. Off you go. Have a go at juggling. Okay, not bad. 
Pretty good, in fact. <laughs> are you? You're not juggling. So I want everyone to engage, because because I believe this. Listen, I hear. Look, I see. Do, I learn. So I'm very practitioner-based. I'm also very aware that I'm going to run out of time this morning, but that doesn't matter. Okay, stop. Here, here, here's a misguided, a misguided use of technology. I've asked you to juggle. What I want you to do now is to watch this juggler. So I haven't even used my slides yet. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. I want you to watch this juggler. Technology must make my way around it. Here we go. Okay. And I want you to mimic this juggler, please. All practicing that? Can you all do that? Keep watching. What level of juggling do you think he's at? Is he enthusiast? Is he developing? Is he expert? Expert. What level are you guys at? No, 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 you're not well, beginners, but you're enthusiasts. Right? Because I never say you're no good. If I say you're no good, that's negative reinforcement that you're not quite there. So I think you've all got tremendous potential. And I think that if I left you here for a day watching that, working in teams, you most probably still wouldn't be able to get to that level. So that is inappropriate modelling by using technology. I say don't do that, and a lot of teachers do that. What they'll do, they'll get a game of Chelsea versus Manchester United with their set ones, and they'll say, watch that game, and you're going to be Ronaldinho. And I want you, and I'm going, that's, that's inappropriate. Okay? So what I'm saying is there is tremendous power in technology, but we've got to use it properly. Okay? We've got to be really sensitive about the way that we do that. Um, I will show you later on uh, another, another little clip that, um, that, that we'll use that perhaps brings that, brings that home um, pr pretty well as well. Okay, so I haven't really started my presentation yet. Okay, so um, I, I have to say that I'm a little bit biased. All right? I, I come from a, a sport uh, where I think there's great intelligence. Uh, it's rugby union and we have very close links with the powers above. That's Leonardo da Vinci. That's on the Sistine Chapel ceiling. Actually, that's Michael Liner, and, and, and I think that's the great creator. I talk about rugby being the game they play in heaven. And all I'm going to do is give you an insight into a three-year study in, in what we've actually done. And I'm going to push through this fairly quickly. Okay? Um, so what we wanted to do, we wanted to look at new pedagogies, um, and we wanted to look at how we can strategize games. Um, because I think um, one of the things I like about being in Singapore is we have Malaysian, we have Chinese, we have Indian, we have expat. We have a huge range of cultures who all think differently. And, and, and the one thing I like about working with Singaporean kids in schools is they're very intelligent. So they're not physically strong, but they're very, very smart. And I believe this, a big strong man will beat I'm, I'm being nice to you. Big strong man will beat a small little man. A fast little man will beat a strong big man. A really intelligent player will beat all of us. <laughs> so, so what we've got to do, we've got, we've got to try and, and, and look at ways in which students can understand the roles and responsibilities they take on, not only in games, but in life in general. Let me tell you a story. I mean, I have taught in schools, and in one school we did our PE lesson on caring for each other. And at the end of the day, I thought, let me look at the authenticity of the learning. So I went outside, the school buses were there, and there was two boys, and they saw this old lady. And they grabbed hold of her, and they walked her across the road. And she started hitting them with an umbrella. Yeah? And I said, what? I ran across, I said, what's going on? 
She said, well, these young men have hijacked me across the road. I said, no, no, they're trying to help you to go across the road. She says, no, I'm waiting for a taxi over there which has been and gone. In other words, although they were being caring, it was inappropriate caring. I might do another thing on, on, uh, on, on honesty. And I went, I've got $10 in there, and I purposely leave it on the ground. And I watch the students. And the students keep looking at it, and they're looking at me, and I'm looking at them. And then eventually, one will put their foot on it and try and pull it towards themselves. <laughs> and then as they go to pick it up, I've got a little string thing, and I'm, you're dishonest. So I test, I do, I do test the waters. So what we wanted to do was look, to see how NIE students could use games to promote uh, uh, other learning outcomes and, and, and to analyse play whereby responsibility and roles were, uh, were, were, were captured and then being able, able to be analysed. Um, we wanted to determine if the terminology um, that is used in professional sport can actually be used in schools. Um, and we spent a long time in schools. Really, really kind, in, kind of interesting when we look at the findings. The, the biggest, um, um, I suppose, uh, I call it um, not, not um, blockage, but the biggest hump, the biggest problem to overcome was not the student's ability to use the technology, it was the teacher. The teachers said, I haven't got the time, this won't work. And what we found was, once we brought the technology in, as soon as I brought the cameras out, guess who ran out and started setting things up? The kids. And when I couldn't understand something, I said, hey, anyone? And they ran in and they took over. And it's kind of impo important we see what they actually said to us. We wanted to investigate and compare two different groups, one using the technology, one not using the technology. Okay, and you've got there, I think that we... We, we want our students to be informed, we want them be, to be compliant, but we also want them to have a, an opinion. And the difference between arguing and having chaos and having an opinion is, is really quite interesting. Um, let, let's set this scenario up. I'm going to throw this ball to you. You ready? Come on, catch it. Why didn't you catch that? Okay, next one. Ready? God, you're, you're getting zero out of ten. All right? You can't catch. What would you say to me? Sorry. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> you might do because you're a good Singaporean. But <laughs> Now, why did she catch that ball? Because it wasn't high and it wasn't low. Because I, I, I allowed her to catch it. And what happens is, when we do peer assessment, you can't catch. You can't catch. All right? They can't catch because I can't throw. And they're getting a poor grade because of what I do. So what do we do? We capture it on video. And then I say to the students, hey, why did you catch that one? Because the thrower threw it accurately. So it's not fair to blame the catcher if the throw isn't right. And what happens in game situations, and I play hockey. Can anyone play hockey here? It's a, re it's a really good game. But I, I've got the one skill, a reverse stick, and then I can push it. But unfortunately... Um, I'm not good enough to be in the right place to use that skill. So I've either got the skill in defence instead of up in attack. Um, so my skill level in, in, in hockey isn't very good. Now, what would you say to me? Miranda, isn't it? Yeah. Miriam, again with an E, an M, I'm not bad. What would you say to me as a hockey player? If you tell me I'm no good and hopeless, how am I going to feel? My self-esteem is going to be pretty low. So what you need to say is, look, Tom, you actually can hold a stick quite well. I know you can run. I know you can communicate. I think you've got the potential, if we give you the right information, to be a good hockey player. And I think, hey, that's good. You see, I've just come back from the UK where I work with coaches uh, coaching Division One size, Wasps and, and, and Saracens. And one of the coaches is a full-time coach. And he's a hard man. He's very fit, right? And he's got a broken nose. And, and he treats his players pretty tough. And he doesn't get a great deal of response from his players. He's got a lot of respect, but not a great deal of response. The other guy who played for South Africa in the centre is a doctor. And he treats his, his players as patients. He has a card. And when they come in, he says, oh, Nelly, your health in passing, in running, and so on, very, very different, very caring. And he doesn't just say, hey, you're no good. He says, listen, this is what I see. This is my prognosis and diagnosis. And he does it because it's evidence-based. And what I'm saying in physical education, I've just said you can't catch. But it's not because you can't catch, it's because I can't throw. And what we do too often is we don't give people the right information. So what I say is accurate feedback promotes 
or accelerates learning. And what we have to do is, is try and make sure we've got a system whereby we can capture the kids being good. All right, so let's catch them being good. So my feedback, hey, I really like what you're doing there, but try this. So it's very, po very positive. And what we did, we wanted to, uh, to um, compare and contrast. So we wanted to help students, we wanted to help, um, we wanted to help the, the teachers, and we wanted to connect, connect some of the theories and, 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 and some of the ideas. By the way, that is not me on the left-hand side up there. All right. That, uh, well, my click, click, click is not working. Um, and, and we wanted to see that if, could we make a real change in, in what was actually happening. So th those are the project questions. I'm not going to go through the questions now because you can do that in your own time. And can I say this? Thank you very much for the opportunity to share my story. I mostly need three hours, not one. Um, but I might give you a tip of the iceberg of, of, of where, where I've been and where, where I hope to go in the future. Um, and so uh, I, won't, I won't read those, um, re read those out in depth because you can read those. You've already got handouts. You can read those in your own time. Um, but, but what's actually happened is we, we've come up with some deliverables. All right? And, and um, let, let, let me explain to you perhaps the, the, the thing... Technology has always been used in phys ed, but it's been used for um, looking at heart rate monitors. It's been used for uh, pedometers to see how far we travel. It hasn't actually been used to link learning and assessment and instruction and, and accelerating performance. And, and what this was was a very crude way of doing it. How did I actually get involved in this? Well, in 2003, I was at the Australian College of Physical Education, and we had the World Cup. Rugby World Cup, not the footy one. I don't like football, soccer, <laughs> terrible game. All right. and, and what happened was I saw uh, um, there was an advert for someone to do the stat, stat, uh, analysis and statistics for Fiji at the World Cup. And, and we got appointed. And we started using DV Coach. And I'll explain a little bit about that. We looked at, it, very simply, you can run, you can pass, you can tackle, you can kick, you can chase. What really... Uh, it, it impressed me about the program, as you'll see, is we can change the focus from either a tackle defence or from the student to the teacher. Now, that's interesting. So we've got a matrix where we can change the buttons. So we capture live the performance, normally of the students, and what I'd like to do is capture the performance of the teacher. So what are the teacher behaviours? Reinforcement, praise, negative and positive, Managerial instruction. What else does a teacher do? A lot of the time they spend moving between, uh, moving between groups. So in physical education, we have what we call ALTPE, academic learning time or active learning time. And we also know that there's different teaching styles. And in Singapore, what's the most, the most prevalent teaching style? Teacher oriented. Teacher oriented. Yeah, teacher orientated, or what I call the sergeant major. Okay, you do what I say because I'm the expert. And we move away from command style into practice style. And we move from practice style into reciprocation. What does reciprocation mean? It means you start teaching each other. And I'm going to show you a, uh, a little uh, task that I do, which would take half an hour, but I'm going to do it very quickly with you, just to show you we could actually turn the camera on the teacher to see if their styles and their behaviour impacts on the students. That's the next stage of this study, which, which is um, kind of interesting. Look, again, I, I don't really want to go into the uh, research methodology, but it was an interpretive qualitative uh, uh, re research program. Um, and we wanted to determine the difference between the two groups. And I've done a lot of studies comparing and contrasting. And basically what happens, regardless of the method you adopt, if you have warmth, if you have good planning, if you have good... Um, enthusiasm, it doesn't matter what you teach or how you teach it, you'll most probably get success. Would, it, would, would there be anyone there who would disagree with that? So maybe the compare and contrast wasn't a particularly good way of, of doing it, but you'll, we'll have a look at the results later on. So we had two groups of 40. Um, there were the outcomes. We wanted kids to collaborate. We wanted to form a community of learners. We wanted them to share ideas and engage amongst the groups between the groups and also with the teacher. Who else do you think, um, and I use Walt Disney quite a lot, who else 
that is accountable? Who's the, perhaps one of the, the major stakeholders in, in students' learning outside the school? We've got the teacher, got the head of the department, we've got the kids, we've got the principal. Parents. Who's got... Yeah, parents. And it's really important that we, that, that we get some dialogue between the parents and, and the kids. One of the problems that I have, and I, we don't live in the, in the perfect world, is that in Singapore, sport isn't seen to be very important. And so if kids are out playing table tennis or on the Wii or kicking a ball around, uh, parents say, hey, come inside, stop playing games and do your academic work. Correct? Why? Because we get rewarded if we're going to be a nuclear physicist, we're going to be a brain surgeon, we're going to be a barrister, we're going to be an engineer. Hmm, not sure about engineering because we've got a lot of students uh, in PSS who have trained engineers who've decided to come across and be PE teachers, but, but that's neither here or there. So this notion of a community of learners is quite important. And what we wanted to do is, is to create evidence to give to parents, to say, look, your kid actually enjoys physical education, and in fact, could be a good pole vaulter, swimmer, or whatever. See, I think excellence is something we all must strive for, regardless of our subject content. But the idea of sharing ideas and helping each other, yes, it's very prevalent within physical education, but when they leave school, when they get into the workplace, they need to be able to do that as well. They also need to be able to perform and compete or, or uh, complete tasks and responsibilities. Okay. I might be... No, I'm not. Look, just a little bit about the games concepts approach. Um, if I asked... I'm going to put the, going to put the um, task on, on there. If I asked you to teach a soccer course for me, what might you teach? Soccer. That's fine. I okay, you haven't played, but what what sort of things would you would you think you? Probably, you'd... I will. Uh, for example, I will act as a model. So how I will play, and then students will follow me. Okay, an educator, you see. All right, so she's going to role model. But what what would the content be? And can anyone help us out? Well, great answer. Can anyone help us out? What would we teach in soccer? Good kicking. What else? Passing. The rules. Maneuvers or tactics and strategy, that's kind of interesting that you mention that because most people teach the techniques first. You see? Ah. Oh. Let me shake your hand. I like you. I like you. And I like you as well because you said maneuvers, what I call tactics and strategies. So we're, we're, we're in a privileged group here because most people would teach heading, goalkeeping, shooting, passing, dribbling, and then the different sort of passes short pass, long pass, flip pass. And I'm saying, look, that's great, but anyone can do that. The difference between being a teacher and an instructor. First aid instructor, you can get your, your qualification in six weeks. To be a, 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 a medical practitioner, it takes you six years. And so we want to be the noblest of professions, not the sorriest of trades. And I think technology really helps us do that as physical educationists. Right, so what I teach, I teach depth. I teach width. I'll talk about penetrating the defence. I'll talk about using your imagination. Now that's really tricky. Because more often than not, when I say to you, I want you to use your imagination to beat the defender. And what they do, they say, oh, what are we going to do? We're going to form a wall, we're going to run at the defender, knock them over. And I say, now that's great, but you're not allowed to do that. We've got to set parameters up. Right? And, and so imagination, we've got to be careful. Because when they use their imagination, sometimes it's outside the realms of what we think is acceptable. Right? So I say to the kids, keep the ball. And the kids pick the ball up, they run out of school, get on the bus and go home. They've kept the ball, but I've got to say keep the ball within a given area. Right? So there's action and there's consequence. So we look at games play, we talk about games form, what actually, what is the game about? So if we look at badminton or tennis, what is the game about? It's about making sure your opponent can't return the shuttle of the ball. It's not about winning points, because if they can't do that, you win the point anyway. So we talk about concepts, and we talk about replication, exaggeration, okay, and modification. So if I've got somebody who's a, an elite, very, very good juggler, what kind of work will I give them? I'll give them high order, very difficult things to do. If I've got somebody who's a novice, what do I give them? I give them something that's very easy. Unfortunately, what we tend to see is one size fits all. We have one game or one textbook, and we all work from that textbook. So we need to, have, need to assess our students by watching them play to say, listen, 
I'm going to be quite specific and individual in the feedback that I give each, each kid. And, and child, not kid, kid's a small goat. Um, so what I need to do is to have a, a, a framework in which I can do that. And so what I've done, I've put together, and I'm very proud of this, and we are going to go uh, commercial with this. What we're going to do is we've given them a, a, a set of games. Okay, so we had the name of the game, we had the purpose, the equipment, Oh, it's all right. That's technology going wild. I just, I, I just pushed my, my recorder under there. So what we actually do, we have purpose of the game, equipment, how to play. We then have safety laws, because I think that's really important. See, regardless of our teaching style, safety is non-negotiable. We can't allow kids to go home with parts of their body missing or, or, bro or broken limbs, because I'd soon have parents complain about me. So I'm accountable to the parents as, as well as the kids. We talk about focus questions for attackers and the defenders. What we've got to be very careful about this is that we don't have a talk fest. So we start talking about the game. Remember what I said? Watch, I see. Listen, I learn. Sorry, listen, I hear. Do, I learn. So I say to the kids, show me the answers. Show me the answers as you play the game. And then within the games, we have variations, simplified uh, for the, uh, what, what I call must-dos. You must do this to play the game. You could do, you should do this to play the game, and you could do this. So we, if you like, we have beginners, intermediates, and advanced, all within the same lesson. So we've got, we've got a set of uh, cards that we use, and, and, and this came from this program. What I also found was we've got different types of learners. And so we've got some kids who are very good literal learners. They can read and write. We've got other kids who can't. So what, what we've done, we've taken this, and we've, we've got instructions PowerPointed, and also we've got a video. So the kids go, go to the game, don't understand it. They go to the PowerPoint, yep, okay, they discuss. Then they go and hit another button, and it shows you playing them, shows the instructor telling them how to play the game. The final thing that we're just doing now, and, and, and this is the, the product. I've got some discs that I showed. Here's the product. We've actually asked our students to go into the school and get the kids demonstrating how to play the game. Because that's, that's the acid test. And if kids see other kids playing, it's like, see, when I, when I do my courses for, uh, for rugby or athletics, I no longer uh, do what I'm doing now, and that's talk to you. I get the people engaged straight away. And I'll ask you to teach a task, and then we'll, we'll review the way that you've taught the task. Because teachers are best at teaching. And, and the one thing I don't do, I don't spend enough time in the primary school working with primary school kids. But what I do do, I, I work with hand-picked kids. I'll select 90 kids and select 20, and they come for me for three months. They play no games. Then we take them to Perth, Hong Kong, Beijing, um, Sydney, and they play three matches. And the test of their learning, if you like, their exam, is when they play the game. But we don't take them away from their school. We don't take them away from their club. Why don't we do that? Because if we do, the, the, the centre of influence for learners in that community is taken away from them. I'm actually doing some work with the sports school now, rewriting their curriculum for set one and two, on the idea of what happens if we don't make it. Because eventually, we're going to have to retire. And one of the things about when you've been a top athlete is how do you cope with retirement when you've been very, very, very good? So as I say, we, we, we've got all these different levels, so, and we've got assessment cards that go with it. Let me go back to, back to our study. So we use the game sense. Talks about situated learning theories. Right? I don't really want to get into that, that, that heavy theory at the moment. Um, but, but, but we also talked about authenticity of, of assessment and al alternative assessment. Okay? Um, and we talked about sampling, representation, exaggeration, tactical complexity. So what you said when you said manoeuvres was spot on. So I'll use, I'll use a different language. Okay? And I'll make assumptions. Um, what's the significance of this project? Um, to date, there was no studies looking at information technology linked to learning and assessing uh, of, of games of physical education. It had all been about heart rate monitors and, 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 and really fitness driven. And it's kind of sad when I go into schools, we've got this wonderful test called for the NAPFA fitness test. And it's pervading and, and, and hijacked the whole of the PE program. We've changed it to Cherish now. 
Right? And what we're doing, we're spending all our times testing and they're doing no learning. And we're teaching to the test, which gives us, uh, give, gives us the, wrong, the wrong information, in my opinion. Right? So um, we've not linked assessment and instruction. Um, we can't, we're using basically videos and, and, and it, it's quite a complex program that we've used and, and I need to put my hand up and say we weren't completely successful um, in, in, in inculcating or um, um, recruiting the kids to the digital uh, community and I'll explain why in a moment. Okay, so we, we kind of believe that, look, um, a picture is worth a thousand words. So if we show people what, what to do, it might be, might be a better way of doing things. I'm going to carry on. I'm going to show you a little, a little uh, exercise I'm going to do afterwards. So it was, um, it was qualitative in nature. We didn't want to measure. Um, we, we, we wanted to sort of look at the quality of play. If you look at a, if you look at a child walking at the age of two and three, how, how, would, how would you describe their walking? When a kid first learns how to walk. They stumble and they fall over. Okay? And their movements are very, very uh, staccato and, and very sort of, you yeah. So if we say that fluidity and continuity uh, and the flow of the game is a criteria for success, if, if in a game, if the ball keeps getting dropped, it means they can't catch. If the ball keeps being passed behind, it means they can't pass. So continuity and fluidity um, was one of our criteria, and, and, and I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, we started looking at blogs, they didn't work. And, and, and I need to talk to you about the ugly stuff that happened. We, we went out into the ideal world and, and we ended up in the real world. Um, blogs, the students weren't interested. And it was interesting, the students were from the IT school Crescent Girls, okay? And uh, they were privileged, they have all the IT in the school. There was actually a negative response because when they came to PE, they said, hey, great, no technology, we've got a break from it. Well, guess what? We introduced technology and they went, oh no, this is normal class again. What actually happened was, um, because they had the skills, they took over the program, a, a, as you'll see. So we used, uh, um, let's just go back there. Okay. We, we used the, apologies, let's go back. Okay. We, we wanted to, to the, by, by capturing on video, we had management interpretation of, of uh, interview text by video. We could talk about new ideas, and we could link the ideas and construction theories about the data generated by our reports. Okay. Um, so there was the school. We had, um, um, if I call it Crestview. I've told you it was Crescent Girls. Um, we had two teachers, two researchers. Um, we had eight NIE students, and we had 80 students, a placebo group and one group who were actually involved in technology. This is what we used. We used PC tablets. We had four of them, okay? And we got the kids to write notes dur during, during the games play session. And can I say one of the biggest lessons we learnt was you must give instant feedback to your students. We tried it the first week. We captured on the video. We did the analysis and gave the information back. By which time the, the notion of time meant that they'd gone away, forgotten about that lesson, gone to four or five other lessons, came back to PE, and it was off their agenda. So I'll explain to you how we actually, we, we, we actually changed that. Um, we had a, the DV coach is a statistical recording computer system, right? Um, and we actually got to it through basketball, because basketball is very coach intervention driven. The players need to get a lot of information from the coach. Um, and, and what we liked about it, it could be tailored to, to use the specific needs of the school or the team or the teacher or indeed the focus of, of analysis. Okay, and it had, we have a different matrix. And if you look at the matrix, maybe, ah, there, there, there's the matrix up there. And you can see we've got um, succeed, swerve, conquered ball, block, success shot, hit wall, pass to open, succeed across, court ball, Headers, lost ball, unforced error, goal, hands ready, turnover, travel ball, selfish play, track defence, skillful tactics, and, and, and good fake. And what actually happened was this. Um, let, let me first of all tell you what happened in the World Cup. World Cup, uh, we had live feed in, into Channel 4. And I was in the box with the, with the coaches. I've got photographs of this. And I had two callers. 
So we number you all 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Got 14 players here. Numbers 1 to 5 is a pass. The sort of pass we have is an incomplete pass, an inaccurate pass, an ineffective pass, um, a successful pass. So if I said 1, 4, that means number 1 passed the ball and it was an effective pass. 2, 1 means 2 passed the ball and it was an ineffective pass. And we did the same for tackle, whatever. As we captured, as we captured the instances, what it meant was at the end of the game, I could give you a video of every time you pass the ball with every success clustered together or every unsuccessful cluster together. What did that give us? It gave us a really powerful model for, for the player to actually look at their own performance. Because what that normally happens is, when you watch a game, how many times do you think you're involved? If a game lasts 80 minutes, how many times do you think you might be involved in the game? Total. 10%. 10%, you're a world-class player. Okay? <laughs> if you're involved in 10% of the game with the ball, you're a genius. Right? It's most probably maximum in an 80-minute game, you're in control of the ball, most probably for two minutes. That's all the time put together. So what does that mean? You're making a big contribution, running off the ball in support. And what we decided to do, we, cap we captured, we captured the, uh, um, the kids playing, and we, we burnt d DVDs for them. Okay. And, and this, was, this was the first level. We just did stats. Stats on number of involvements. So I might say to you, you passed the ball 20 times, um, you caught it four times, you kicked it five times, and you supported six times. Well, that's great. We know your involvement. But if you're the goalkeeper and you've had a really good day, <laughs> you have no involvement at all. There is no, there is no data about your play. All right? Now, does everyone know what a missed tackle is? So you're running at me, and I go to tackle you, but I miss you. All right? Now, that means I've been unsuccessful in taking the ball off you. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Go on, whispered bad thing. You're wrong. Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> I'd, like to think that, I'd like to think normally what everyone would say is, hey, if you've you missed the tackles, you're not very good at tackling. But listen to this. You're in a, you're in a plane. No, no. You're in an exam. You get 95% in the exam. How do you feel? Great. Well done, congratulations. You're in the plane. There's a 5% chance that your parachute's not going to open. How do you feel? <laughs> oh, you don't feel so good. So statistics, depending on the interpretation, can, can, can vary. So you say, listen, missed tackle, not very good. All right? But I say this, I applaud the fact that she's missed the tackle. Very well done. At least you tried to make the tackle. Because this bloke didn't want to make the tackle at all. <laughs> Can you see how? So, you know, statistics and interpretation of, the, of, of a video is really quite important. See, there's a thing called competent bystanding. And I think we all do this a little bit. It's called the avoidance of work. And I know a lot of players and a lot of students who spend more time thinking up excuses why they don't hand their work in rather than just doing the work and handing it in. What do I mean by that, competent bystanding? You've got the ball. You're a very good player. Very handsome and very rich as well. Okay? So you're running at me. I don't want to be embarrassed, so what do I do? I run over here, and I get behind my friend here and say, you make the tackle. Oh. All right? Now, what am, I, what, what, am I, what am I displaying there? I'm displaying huge intelligence. I'm strategically very, very smart. Because I can work out where he's going to run to and run away from him. We call that competent bystanding. And kids might do it, and, I, and, and I'm, I'm really careful because the game, the game that I teach, physical uh, size, is, is, a, is a great advantage. Um, I've just been in the UK for two weeks working with, with the university students on, on this sort of work and sharing our ideas with them, but also I've gone to professional places. The boys now spend five hours in the gym. And they do all this. <laughs> They're all like that. And what they want to do, they want to run straight into you. What I call the Maori sidestep. Right? That's not smart play. But they've lost their ability to be light on their feet and jink. And they just want to go into contact. 
And what happened is they're, they're actually playing into the hands of the opposition. He's, a, he's their best player, strongest tackler. Every time I run to him, he takes the ball off me. What will all the teams do? You know you're going to play him next week. What are you going to do? Well, you, you be careful. You want to shoot him. No, you can't do that. You can't shoot him. What are you going to do? You do want him. You want to take him out of the game, don't you? Yeah? So what do we do? I'm playing next week. I tell all my players to run away from him. We run into other space. After three weeks, their strongest player hasn't been run at. He will lose the skill of tackling. So what do I do? I target their strengths. I say, let's run at him. He's your best player, and we run straight over the top of him. How do you feel? Oh, my goodness. If they're doing that to our best player, what are they going to do to us? So, you know, what we've got to do is, is start using the grey matter. Okay, we've got to start playing really intelligently. So, as I say, we looked at runs, we looked at tick, uh, kicks, we looked at tags, we looked at unforced errors. So, what's an unforced error? That's dropping the ball, throwing the ball off the field. It's something that we can control. Can I say, what happened with all of these things? We, we had lots and lots of games. But the trouble is, if we talk about decision making and option taking, What's my option as a, as a rugby player? I can run with the ball, I can pass the ball, I can kick the ball. Well, you see, if I can't kick the ball and I can't pass the ball very well, what am I going to do? I'm going to run. Well, there's no option to be taken. So unless we have a skills reservoir, it's like saying, um, are you going to speak Russian? Are you going to speak Singaporean? Are you going to speak English? Are you going to speak Japanese? Well, if all you can do is speak English, and in my case, very quickly and, and not very well, I've got no options about what language I use because I haven't got those skills to, t to, to speak Singaporean, Russian, Japanese or whatever. So what we found is there's a huge correlation between decision making and option taking to skill set. And we've worked with kids at primary school. And there's no point playing games if kids haven't got skills. So what we've done with these games cards, we've now got technique cards. Anyone here teach English or reading or maths? What do they do in maths? What they do, they test you. And they say you're at such a level. And they say, here's the card or your textbook. Start working on that. And when you get stuck, they say, now listen, you need some remediation. And they give you another card. And you, you go through that, that process. Then you go back, you solve the problem, you move on. Well, I think we should do exactly the same in physical education. I believe if kids can't play a game, the reason why they can't play a game is because they haven't got the technical know-how. So what I've got now is 120 technical tasks, which will be video, okay? whereby during the game, we'll play the game, we'll then say, like taking the pulse or taking, taking their temperature, this is, what, this is where you're at. You need now to go over here. A bit clinical, isn't it? A bit like a doctor. And that's why I say uh, um, Brendan Ventner was, you know, was very interesting for me as a coach because he was a trained doctor and keeps lots of, lots of information about his students. I think as teachers, that's what we should do, is keep a lot of information. So there was the first level of assessment. The second level of assessment was we went to, to, to concepts, and they were possession of the ball, pressure the defending, uh, the, the, the defence, not related to field position. So you, the best form of attack, or the best form of defence is attack. It's like get your retaliation in first. How do you get your retaliation in first? If you haven't done anything to you, you can't retaliate. Anyway, I won't go there on that one. Um, but we, look, we looked at these. So rather than just tallying, we started looking at these actions that could be taken on the field. And then finally, um, we did it for attack and we did it for, for defence. And we came up then with, with, the, with these other things. Game appreciation. See, one of the things the students told us was they didn't think they were better players, but at least they knew how to play the game. They understood what was required. And given more time, a lot of time playing, they would have become better players. And it's, they were all girls, and they picked tag rugby, fortunately, because I know tag reasonably well. So they came up with tactical awareness, appropriate decision-making, skill acquisition, student ability, psychomotor skills, cognitive response. Hey, playing games... We're promoting those sort of outcomes. Pretty impressive. All right? Um, conclusions. And again, this was great. We got a real record of what we actually did during the game. Not some guesswork by the teacher. 
I suspect when I was at school for my history, the teacher took our books, put ABC on the steps, took the books, threw them over their shoulder. Where the books landed, that was the grade you got. That's totally irresponsible. Okay? So students really appreciate the fact that the teacher takes time and care to actually know who you are. So that caring approach is really important. But it also means if you're the best kicker of the ball and the great best goalkeeper, why do goalkeeping with you? Uh, sorry, why do uh, uh, soccer shooting with you? You're not very good at trapping the ball with your feet. So you need to do that. But you can trap the ball really well with your feet, but your, your, your passing's not so good. So each individual gets some specific um, remediation for them. So we don't have, oh, we're going to play soccer, let's go out and play. Roll out the ball has got no place. As, as PE teachers and as teachers regardless, we must know our students. We must know where they are on the learning continuum. We must know how they learn. We must be aware of the different teaching approaches that there are. Because they were small teams, the kids said, we can't stand around anymore. We're on TV. We can't hide. So accountability was really improved. Okay? We found that, that, that because there were small-sided games, their involvement was repeated and was frequent. If you want a good performance, whether it's playing the violin, whether it's... Um, um, Washing up, whether it's delivering milk, you've got to spend a lot of time doing that. So if we want them to play games, let them play, but let's have sensitive feedback whilst they play. Who, who ever seen this? Right, class, I want you to go and play. And you get all excited, we're going to go and play, and they just get onto the field, come back again. Oh, well, have you never even played yet? How frustrating is that? Or the opposite end is, take the ball and go and play. And if we did that for three weeks, first week, because, oh, that was great, we played soccer all day today. But then others say, hang on, we played soccer and you keep cheating. In fact, you keep picking the ball up and running with it and you keep kicking people up in the air. Teacher, teacher, can you stop? Because we need teachers to control the environment. And eventually what will happen is they say, hang on, why are we paying the teacher if the kids are teaching themselves? That's the opposite end of the continuum. Okay? Um, so if, if we want them to play, we, we've got to make sure they have opportunities to, to play. Um, there was an acceleration of ta technical and tactical with itness. Okay? And this was from the teacher. There was evidence of a large incremental improvement between the games each week, and especially after weeks four and five. Because weeks one, two, and three, we were setting up routines, and they never played the game. See, I'm going to do this now. I hope it doesn't backfire. They can catch. Why would I spend a lesson talking about face me, eyes on the ball, hold your They can catch. Move on with it. Okay? Now let's try and get them to catch a really fast pass or a pass around the back, which he didn't see, all right, because I can work in the circus, all right, but that's, that's all I do. So what we've got to do is, is make sure, when do kids get bored? They get bored when it's too hard or it's too easy. And so we have to know where they are. And that's why the video really helps us. Um, lessons took on a structure of their own. They, they had their own routines. Like I say, I put the cameras out, the kids would just run out and set it up. The teacher would be on a mobile phone, or his mobile phone, because of equal opportunity and gender equity. I don't want to make assumptions that... Anyway, you know what I'm saying. And, and in fact, that teacher moved right away out, wasn't involved, and the kids kind of took over. We talk about em uh, empowerment. Two sorts of... Two sorts of coaches, one that's going to get sacked and one that's been sacked. I hope that isn't the case in teaching. I hope we're not going to get the sack as teachers. All right? um, but there was tactical timeouts. What actually happened was the kids, when we had a break for water, they actually said, hey, you need to tackle him. You go forward a little bit, then I'll get in behind you. And they started talking about their game and started talking about tactics and strategies. Okay. Um, one of the teachers said, this will not work, there's too much work to do here. So I just took that teacher out of the way. Um, it's kind of interesting that one Chinese scholar, and I think that's her, she was six foot two. And I'm telling you, that girl could play netball, could do high jump, hurdles, any sport for Singapore, and she'd be a world champion. But she wasn't involved in sport because she was an academic scholar. And I'm going, oh, 
But, you know, I couldn't take her and pers- persuade. She physically had every attribute, and she was as smart as. As soon as she got the ball, she was just leaving people behind. And that was just one, one, one girl. Um, the, the, the teacher at the end said, look, I've changed a little in my thoughts. I think I will certainly play the game, which was tagged with other classes, but I'm not sure about the assessment process. It takes too long and it's a little complicated. And I understood that and said, fine. One of the problems we have in Singapore is that our assessment is high state. In other words, we assess at primary to go to secondary. We assess at secondary to go to university. We assess at university to get your degree. If it's high stake, if it isn't seen to motivate, if I keep saying, congratulations, you're an A-grade student, you're an A-grade student, look forward to seeing you next week, I want you to come back, I want to win their hearts and minds. I want to catch them being good. If I keep saying, you know, you're not very good, I don't like you. (laughs) And and what, what do we do as teachers? We sometimes keep away from the troublemakers. And I can actually say I look for the troublemakers because I think sometimes they've got great potential. Well, it's kind of interesting. I was back in the UK and two boys came up to me and one said, oh, you're Tom Brown. I said, yeah, please let me. He said, he said oh, it was fantastic. He said, I loved your lessons and I still play the game. Another boy, boy came up and he looked really rough and he said, I remember you. <laughs> you used to whack me with a cricket bat. And the only thing I learned from you was not to talk. And I thought, mm, I've kind of changed now. I actually want kids to talk. Not necessarily when I'm giving instructions, but I want them to engage. All right, so so that's, that's kind of important. Um, what she also said, I'm actually surprised how well both classes learnt to play the game, given that the second class are more athletic and initially were better at games than the first. Perhaps the first class were, it was more, uh, more impressive. It was great fun to see ourselves on TV, but after a time we could understand what was being expected of us and could actually see some of the things different things to do. So this notion, if I say to kids space, they immediately think of Apollo 14. They think of astronauts, certainly little uh, primary school kids. It's an abstract notion. I actually said to kids, hey, I want you to kill the ball. And they started stabbing it and jumping on it and squeaking. I'm going, no, no, not that sort of kill. I'm in control of the ball. So the use of language is really quite important. I like the fact we got to see what we were doing wrong and right and had a, better, had a, had a chance to get better. Look, some of the filming was pretty shocking. It wasn't very good. Right? And one of the things that we have to do is, is to try and, and make sure that we, we train the kids up now. The program we used is everybody was a player, but you were the coach. You were the manager. You were the statistician. You were the video camera operator. You were the match reporter. You had to write. You were the photographer. So everybody took on a role that, that there would be in professional sport. Because in professional sport, you can earn a living organising tours, being a referee. And so we're trying to recruit people to the movement culture. Um, and, and one of the groups said, the other group within that, why can't we have cameras like the other group? It's not fair. How can we possibly remember what we did in one week, what we did last week, never mind what we did the week before? All right? Um, I'm actually going to... Going to stop there. There were limitations. Limitations were when it rained, we didn't have tarpaulins to put over the cameras. Also, um, it's quite expensive to uh, to give every 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 group a um, um, give every group a, a camera, uh, every group a computer. Okay. Last thing I want to do, and this is my report. This is this is a deliverable. This is a, a report based on what we came up with. Um, because of, because of the, 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 the study. And you see, I think that's the important thing. I, I haven't published worldwide. I have been invited all over the place, actually, but not worldwide. Whoops, I'm going to have to steal. You can't have that because you're not officially here. All right? <laughs> um, but, and, and you've got one there. I've got one more. So we looked at gain possession, go forward, provide support, maintain continuity, apply pressure and score. Go forward, provide support, apply pressure and regain possession. What we came up with was a criteria list of what the ball carrier can do. We just levelled. Level one, enthusiast. Level four, elite Olympian. In other words, not very good, good, excellent, tremendous. And, and, And so we went through those categories. If you looked at on page three, looked at our category, if they got all fours, I gave them a standing ovation. You're marvellous. If they got threes, we told them they were great. If they got twos, we said, well done. 
If they got ones, they're not very good really. We said that was a sound effort. And if they got silence, you need to improve. All right? And then I've, I've given them the report. Then we looked at other, other, other match-like performances. All I, all I did was grade them on skill-based, problem-solving, motivation, competitive, player first, complementary to other people in their team, the notion of diversity, fitness, reputation, team-builder, activity-driven. And then if you look at page four, I said to, the, to our guys, what do we need to be good players? And that's what they came up with, a fairly extensive list. And all we did was I just ticked those, or I use a, a, a marker pen, what a comprehensive interim report that is for the parents, and also for the player. And we actually gave operational definitions to, 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 to those outcomes. Page five, you can see, we gave them um, a, a grade for what they did over three months, whether they excelled, applied, consolidated, established, and participated. And what's really interesting is this. Have you ever seen people who do really well in tests, but actually aren't good practitioners? So we've got guys who do really well when we do a skills test. Accuracy, great. They're fantastic. Their fitness is great. Put them in the game, they're just not, not good players. And we've got other people who fail at all the tests, and yet they are absolutely gifted players. So we've got to keep a balance and keep a holistic picture of where we're going. So it's kind of interesting, they got different grades for their performance over three months and their video analysis. Okay, and then you can see what we did. We got them to analyze the game, and I'm running out of time, so I'm, I'm gonna be quite succinct and then ask for any questions. On page six, we've got tallying, watching the video, maintain, support, advance, continuity, pressure, break line, defense, and decoy. We got them to do it once. We got them to do, uh, that was um, a, a attack. We got them to do the same in defense. And then we let them have a second go. And the accuracy and improvement in the second attempt was far better than the first attempt. All right? But what happened was, when we had timeouts, they started using the language that was on the assessment form. So their understanding was far, far clearer. Okay, it is 34 minutes past. I'm actually going to say, look, thank you very, very much for your opportunity to share. I've got a whole heap, but let me just show you one more. See you tomorrow, go and practice the dance. But we also have an assessor who helps the teacher. Right? And it's really important, perhaps the hardest thing to do is to mentor the teacher. Right? And then what I do, we go through that, then I get them to do this one, because they then learn that it's unfair to judge the teacher by the performance of, 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 of the player. And I will play this one, because I show this one. And invariably, they can't do it. Why? Because it's trick photography. So it doesn't matter how good the model is, if it's not, a, if it's not an authentic task, they can't do it. Um, oh, I'm going to show you this last one. Right, I've got loads more that I want to show you, but we've run out of time. And sometimes I think this is the case. At midnight on February 17, 2009, all televisions will switch from analog to 100% digital. If you are still receiving your signal over the air, you will have to convert your analog signal. Analog? The conversion is simple. First, apply for your converter box coupon at www.dtptransition.gov. How many W's? Then you check the status of your coupon request to www.dtp2009.gov slash checkstatus.aspx. Is that in Los Angeles? After you purchase the converter, it's time to install it. A quick start guide and installation video are available at www.digitaltips.org under the DTV slash video tab. Is this my new TV? It's <laughs> and no tools are necessary. Step one, disconnect your TV antenna from the TV and connect it to the antenna in coaxial jack on your converter box. If your set antenna use a 300 ohm flat twin lead wire connector, simply <laughs> obtain a 300 ohm to 75 ohm transformer or a bailout. Hello? A coaxial antenna switch box will also suffice. 
will all of this make Jack Benny come back? <laughs> you see people that came with your converter box to connect the antenna out jack on the converter to the antenna in jack on your TV set. Remember, in some cases, your digital signal may come from another source, and you may need to adjust your satellite. If you have any problems at all, simply visit the following websites for assistance. GitHub, two dot slashes, blah, 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 period, digital tips, period, or just, blah, 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 period, D, D, D. Okay, and I, I just sometimes think that that's the level of technical, uh, not appreciation, but the, the, willing, the willingness to be, to, to be involved. Jeez, I wish I had another two hours, but I haven't. Have we got any mathematicians here? I'm just going to show you this one. Mathematicians. I figure 75% to you, Bob and 25% divided between the five of us. Gina, Crowbar, myself, Tom, and the baby. That makes 5% for each one of us. Ah, uh, uh, Billy, you're cheating yourself. If there's 25% divided among the five of you, that's 14% apiece. Oh, no, listen, Bob. I, I wouldn't cheat sir. You know I wouldn't. Now, look. Look here. I'm showing you. I'm going to run this out here. Now, 25 divided by 5 is 5. You see, the 5 won't go into 2, will it? No. But five goes into 25 five times, you see? Oh, you're wrong, Billy. Now, now, <laughs> now, five into 25, five won't go into two. No. But five goes into five once. Now, we didn't use the two before, so it's going right down here. Now, five into 20 goes four times. There you are. Five. Into 25, 14. No. <laughs> Let me prove it to you. Now. I'm on the uh, Five times five. Five times five is 25. I'm surprised you're learning. Huh? I'm surprised that you're learning. Now I'll show you. Five times 14 is 25. Five times four is 20. Five times one is five. <laughs> And I think the lesson there is we have to be very, very careful about the way that we invite people. Can, can I say, look, they're the discs that I've generated uh, um, with one team this, 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 um, this semester. Um, it's kind of interesting. Everyone I've used this program with, believe it or not, for two and a half years, we actually lost our first game on last Thursday, and that would be maybe 40 games, and we lost it. 5-0 against the Anglo-Chinese Junior College and we'd been on their line for half an hour and we didn't score. Um, but it's easy to generate a lot of discs, very hard to analyse. And so now my task, um, and what, what we're doing is, we're actually an, uh, burning the discs as they play. So when they leave now, we give them a disc that they take home with them. Um, we also generate a match report on the side of the field and give them statistics on the side of the field at half time. Okay? Um, it's quite high order, and we give them a diary, and they have to write a diary, and I ask for the diaries to come back in. And what we're finding now is they're actually getting thirsty for the knowledge and doing a lot of self-correction physically. Um, any questions? M my apologies for trying to cram, you know, three days into, into an hour. Can I thank you for the way in which you've, you, you've been uh, so responsive and, and uh, entertained there? Okay. Any questions? How do you get your, your people to plan the, the games? That okay, well, what, 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 we've, what we've done is um, invariably in physical education, um, and we talk about inclusion, invariably there'll be somebody who's ill, 
that somebody's got an injury, somebody's forgotten their kit. So I've got, I've, I've got a booklet that, and, and that tells them how to use the video camera, that tells them how to use all, 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 the, all the different uh, equipment that we have, including the tripod. So they all learn how to do that. And then, um, because we've got small-sided teams, sometimes, instead of team one playing two, three, two, three playing two, four, what we'll say is, team one, go and practice. Team two, you will be the video operators whilst team three and four play. But we always have them, they must play every lesson. So that notion, and as I said, initially, some of the camera filming was pretty poor. Okay, but that's the way we did. We, 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 we taught everybody and we got a booklet that shows them how to use the camera. So there's a manual. Um, the, 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 the big problem for me was um, the analysis, um, the actual burning of the CDs and capturing, we, we, we decided to do for them because we were only there for uh, three months. And so we gave them the disc and they then analysed the disc. What they did was self-assessment of their own team and graded themselves. And then we got them to construct some strategies and tactics for the team they were going to play against. So all of a sudden, we got them uh, achieving real educational broader outcomes rather than just playing the game. And, and, and what they actually said to us, no, we're not better players necessarily, but at least we understand what we're supposed to do. So we're quite confident that if we, if we stayed in the school, they, they, they would get better. I could go on forever. Uh, I, I can't because I've got to go somewhere else. But, but I believe there is refreshment out, outside. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Tom Brown okay, for spending time with us, uh, giving us a very uh, insightful sharing. Uh, it's also very interesting. Okay, uh, <laughs> and I'd like to uh, present a token to Tom. Uh, uh, Dr. Tom. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.